OK, so hello everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Dia from grade 11, and I would like to welcome you all to the first Ajivan lecture of this term. So what does Ajivan even mean? Essentially, Ajivan translates to lifelong, which perfectly captures the purpose of these sessions, which is to help you gain knowledge and advice that will help you throughout your life. So uh, that brings us to our speaker for today's session, who is Ms. Deeksha Ahuja. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Ms. Deeksha is the founder of NQB, which is a startup incubator for women-led businesses. She started her first business in college, and since then she has founded four different companies which are all keen about promoting diversity. Um, and during the interview, you know, feel free to post any question in the chat. And I will be sending a form in which you could send anonymous questions in case you feel like doing that. And we'll be taking these questions during the last uh, you know, 15 to 20 minutes. So do make sure to ask questions. You learn a lot from this. So yeah, once again, a very wa warm welcome to you, Ms. Deeksha. Thank you so much, uh, Dia, Viraj, Pooja. You guys have been so exceptional. And you know, I actually want to commend all of you because um, I think this is completely student run, correct? And that I think itself is so entrepreneurial. Uh, you know, doing this in grade 11 is, is very exceptional. Uh, and I want to sort of, you know, keep today very conversational with all of you. Um, unfortunately, I was in school a very, very long time ago. Uh, a lot has changed, but uh, what I do want to tell you is that, you know, you're sort of at that very, very interesting phase in your life, but you're going to get a lot of opinions and a lot of, you know, things of what to do, what not to do. Parents are going to say something, you're, you want to do something, your friends are going to say something, you're reading something on the internet, right? So. I think what I just want to be able to share today is, you know, my story and to also make you realize that there is no one path to success uh, and also success is not conventional, right? Like something like being successful is very much personal to a person, right? Maybe for someone being successful is getting an 80, but maybe for someone being successful is getting 99, right? So never sort of, you know, gauge uh, success on what other people term make your own sort of you know goals and say hey today I had to maybe I don't know study math and complete this and I've done it and I'm successful for the day right so that's how I've sort of lived my life it's been very unconventional I didn't do an MBA um, I have never ever worked for anyone else in my life except for internships I run four companies and, you know, 10 years ago, if you ask me what I'm doing, I'm like, I have no idea, right? But it sort of all worked out uh, as far as you feel and you want to do things that you're very passionate about, but you do them consistently. Um, so, you know, with that, um, I'm so glad all of you could join us and I hope to add value today. Cool. Oh, yeah. The, thanks for those words and thank you for the introduction, Dia. So we'll just jump straight into it. Um, so Ms. Deeksha, for those who may not know you, could you just give us a brief introduction about yourself, you know, yeah. a bit about yourself, your yeah. background and your career so far? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, my pleasure. Am I audible? Fine? Yes, yeah. Okay, great. Um, so, you know, just like all of you, um, I, um, you know, after class 10, I remember, I went to, I did ICSC board and, um, you know, I went to a very good school. I'm based out of Pune and um, the only goal of my school was to get everyone to get like 90, 95 above. So like everyone else, I scored like a 95 in my 10. And then, you know, with all the common uh, sort of buzz around, we're like, okay, do science. Um, so I, you know, ended up doing science in class 11 and um, all of these subjects, you know, physics and chemistry and computers, they just went above my head. And I'm like, you know, what am I doing? Uh, you know, I thought that science is going to be easy or it's going to be easy if you've scored well, but maybe not the case. And that's when, you know, in class 11, I sort of took the decision and said that, hey, I'm not really interested in this because I didn't want to be an engineer. Everyone who was studying science was like, you know, we want to be an engineer we want to top IIT and I'm like, hey, you know, those are not my goals. I have no intention of being an engineer. So why am I doing science? So I still remember in class 11, I shifted to commerce 
um i resonated very well with you know business economics you know everything accounting finance and that's when i sort of said that you know um uh, i think this is a lot more my place than you know sort of doing science so that was sort of you know the first uh turning point or learn for me you know when i was pretty much uh, around your age uh then came to college right like in india it's a big thing right please get good marks so that you know you can get into the top and you know even today of course uh cut offs are very high but you know even about i would say 10 years ago the good colleges you had to have a 1995 like that was a minimum for you to get anywhere right so I actually got a 95 actually topped my city but um the option was okay do i go to du to do economics or you know do i go to another college or do i go abroad but at that time i remember as backup i had applied to st xavier's in bombay uh, i didn't get my course subjects even after having such good marks and i was like you know uh what do i do and um i had an admission in savior st xavier's in bombay which was a great college too so that's how my college journey started i started studying uh undergrad in uh business studies management and finance and it was actually a very good decision for two reasons one is um you know there were students from all across the country um secondly um as a college uh you know we were encouraged to really intern at lot of places right so college life i mean apart from of course being with friends and i really hope when you all go to college covid is over so you can enjoy and really you know spend time with friends but college life teaches you a lot of things right of course you know it sort of is your entry into adult world but it also sort of makes you think what you want to do with your life right because before that you've never really experienced you know what part of a job do i really like what job do i know not like so my uh, sort of you know intention of college was that let me at least figure out what i don't like right because it's like the process of elimination right when you sort of eliminate what you don't like you're closer to what you probably like so over 3 years of my course i interned with about six organizations across fields one was in private equity and finance uh one was with real estate consulting a company called jll um one was with zomato they were you know uh, now of course they've ipoed but you know 10 11 years back they were just starting offices in different parts of uh, india so for their pune office i kind of helped them set up so got a flavor of what i liked what i didn't like and i realized okay i don't think i want to be stock broking or being an investment banker cuz that just seemed too boring to me and at the same time uh, you know of course placements and college so i got a couple of offers in from google i got an offer from mckinsey in consulting but something inside me was not very convinced that this is what i want to do with my life and at the same time you know there was this entrepreneurial bug where as a person i'm very uh, sort of uh, passionate about driving change so i directly want to see that today if i am spending most of my day in something how is it impacting you know people who are apart from just me or my family right because I, i mean if it doesn't then you know what what the hell am i doing um now i looked at the education sector uh, very closely now of course all of you understand edtech because you know india is such a big market it's the largest you know edtech market now with companies like byju's and an academy but like 8 to 10 years back that was not the case uh but i knew one thing when i went to school and i studied so much and you get all these marks i never really used it you know in my sort of professional life so i said you know i think we need to really relook at what we teach children um and that's how you know we i started my first company in the edtech space called cedar wood uh which was actually with the intention of helping uh you know young adults skill uh in 21st century is around problem solving creativity so on and so forth um so that was literally the start of my entrepreneurial career and when you're sort of building a company ground up from scratch there's a lot that you get to learn right you have you are your own team you have to hire a team you have to set the business you have to figure out what your business model is so on and so forth right so it was very challenging but at the same time it sort of taught me a lot of things and i discovered two things during that entire time right one was the fact that of course there was there were very few people in entrepreneurship about 10 years ago 
uh, and very few women, uh, you know, at that time when I would sort of go to a lot of these entrepreneurial events, there were hardly any women and there was not enough engagement between people who were working in, say, a corporate versus someone who was a startup founder. And, you know, about six, seven years ago, I said, you know, I want to change the way that, you know, our startup ecosystem is built. We definitely need to create more diversity, more space for women as entrepreneurs, as well as investors. And of course, we need to create an ecosystem where all entities are coming together to work with startups, right? Because I'm sort of a firm believer that as a startup founder, you really, really can change the face of the world today. Um, so that's how I started my second company. Uh, it was called Collaborate Her, uh, which actually we, we did both of these things, right? We worked with a lot of corporates, people like HSBC, a couple of other companies to actually say how they can support the startup ecosystem. Of course, organized a lot of uh, meetups, networking events for entrepreneurs, so on and so forth, right? And that's when I think the pandemic hit. Um, and I said, you know, we need to do specifically something for women uh, because that's that's something that's very close to my heart. Um, and we learned something called NQB um, as a platform for women founders where we brought all these people together, experts, mentors, corporates to see how they could really help women led businesses scale up. Right. Um, and in that journey, I realized that funding, right, funding for startups, I'm sure you guys you know, must be seeing headlines about this company got funded this much, this company raised this much, this company went IPO, you know, so in a startup world, of course, you need, um, you know, connects, you need a good idea to start a business, but you also need capital, right? And again, very little capital was going to companies that were co-founded or founded by women. And that's when I said that, you know, we need to create more capital. And I started something called uh, the NQB Angel Network, where we get more people to become angel investors, which is early investors in startups, right, to, to fund some of these ventures. Um, so I don't know if I've done a good job because a lot of what I do is a little complicated. Uh, but I think the point I was trying to make uh, in my journey was that um, if you go and speak to someone about what I've done, they'll probably tell you either it's impossible or don't ever do this, right? Because, you know, it's it's not set, you know, your set thing is, okay, uh, you know, go into a good college, fine, then get a job or do an MBA, then maybe go abroad, then get a top, you know, get a job with a really, really established company and then you're set for life, right? But I didn't want to settle for that because that just didn't seem challenging and that that didn't seem like it was exciting for my learning curve. Right. So, uh, Raj, I hope I did your question some justice. Yeah, that was a great response. You know, so like I want to like a, a, a small follow up question. Right. So you, you talked about NQB, right, and how its mission is to encourage women entrepreneurs and women investors to take up entrepreneurship and scale their ventures into something impactful. Right. So when you started, uh, when you first started NQB, what are some of the challenges or struggles you faced and what did you do to overcome them? I'm sorry. So you want to understand my challenges when I was building my venture entrepreneurial? Yeah. Any struggles? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's only struggles. <laughs> Nine out of 10 time you're struggling. You know, the biggest thing is motivation. Um, you know, when, you know, you're working in a company, uh, there are other people, uh, they will tell you what to do, so on and so forth. You will have deadlines, right? And it's like a process. When you start your own company, it's all dependent on you, right? No one cares if you make or if you meet that deadline or you don't do work, right? You have to wake up every morning, set your own goals, motivate yourself because no one cares if you show up or don't, right? It's it's your company. So I think that was really challenging because, you know, working alone sometimes is very, very challenging, right? I mean, we're, we're social uh, beings after all, right? So that was one. Second thing is... Um, I think, um, you know, when you're when you when you started something, um, there are a lot of people out there who probably don't understand what you're doing, why you're doing right. And um, as much as you know, you want to ignore some of that, sometimes it gets to you, right? Because as an entrepreneur, you also have to talk to so many people, tell them what you do, right? And if they don't understand, it gets discouraging, right? So validation, uh, you know, maybe not getting validation. 
um and i think the third thing is just juggling so many things right um as an entrepreneur you don't have the liberty to hire a big team and say okay you're going to be responsible for marketing you are going to do finance or you're going to hire a team um you generally start off alone or so you may have one or two other co-founders with you right so uh, there's a lot of work uh, there are sort of times where uh working weekends you have to sacrifice holidays you know there's there's no set timeline right uh it's not like a job where you're like yeah i'll go 9 to 5 and then i'll come back and then you know i do something else it's it's literally being in the thick and thin of it so viraj i think those were the those are the top 3 challenges that at least i faced as an entrepreneur yeah i mean yeah definitely while well, starting a business is a, i feel like a completely different experience from working in a regular job mm -hmm. so i think since you wanted this uh, session to be more interactive we yeah. could start the q and a right now yeah, absolutely so um, so yeah we've actually got one question which is uh, that what is the best career advice you've received actually none <laughs> i think the best career advice uh, is that um you know um whatever you do please do it with consistency and 100% dedication if you're doing something half heartedly it's never going to work out and i'll tell you why it works out when you are doing it with dedication right look at least for me you know what i'm trying to do with sort of really change the di diversity dynamic in startups is not easy at all right it's 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 very very difficult it's actually creating a business opportunity where it doesn't exist um i know i'm passionate about it i have been wanting i mean i've been working on this for past 6 years and today on its own i have some of the top people across you know sort of companies or leadership positions who come and say Hey, we love what you're doing. How can we help? And they open up doors, right? And this is, in a way, the universe sort of backing you, right? So if you're very dedicated and you are very passionate about something, uh, and you give it your hundred percent, the universe will give it back to you four x, right? But on the other hand, if you do something very half-heartedly without conviction, uh, things are not going to work your way, right? Because luck favors people that are prepared. You know, there's nothing called luck. So. Uh, i think that that's sort of my career advice and also from a risk taking point of view i tell this to everyone that you know the first 5 years of your career you guys are still in school right you have maybe 3 to 4 years of college and after that you will you know maybe work or study but i would say after 20 till 25 at least for the first 5 years experiment as much as you can and make as many mistakes right because you are allowed to do that you still don't know but after that make sure that you've experimented and experienced so much that you know what you want to do after that for the rest of your life yeah yeah that that's actually really good advice and uh, sort of connected to self motivation there is a question that we've got which is you mentioned how self motivation is key as an entrepreneur so mm -hmm. how would you suggest that students stay motivated good question i think uh, the fact that you know y'all are on this call today to listen to me and i'm not part of some course or some gpa of yours is is a great example of being motivated but as students um i think so you you have to figure out what works for you right motivation is also very subjective in my mind right if you are a person who is motivated by learning more right maybe reading maybe looking at you know videos whatever you like to do so make sure that you're constantly learning outside of your school syllabus very important very 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 important okay and that sort of motivate you because the more you know the more you want to know and that's motivational second thing is if you are someone who derives motivation out of a group uh you know maybe you guys can get together and you know figure out who in you know in your group or in your peers share a common interest maybe start a club or you know maybe meet at meet every meet exchange knowledge you know so that there is some sort of accountability right see i would personally tell you to do the first one because uh when you have personal accountability you don't need anyone in life right self motivation is i think one of the most you know important skills to develop but if you need a little bit help always go to your peer so that you give someone the accountability right and and yeah i mean um 
I know all of us are privileged enough today. All of you are privileged enough, right? Your parents are there. You don't have to worry about, you know, taking care of the family or not, right? But at the same time, I think it's very important that you start thinking independently, right? That once I'm done, you know, with studies, once I've done this, I know that I want to be independent or I know that I want to be able to support anyone, right? Whether it's your family, whether it's anyone else, right? So I think responsibility also breeds motivation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your response. And yeah, I think this is a really, I mean, I myself, I'm learning so much. So <laughs> there are two uh, questions which are sort of similar. So yeah. I'll club them and uh, it's, the question is that what are some common misconceptions people have regarding women in entrepreneurship? Yeah. And also, um, have you yourself faced any discrimination or societal pressure as a woman entrepreneur? And how did you overcome this? Right. Uh, so maybe I'll uh, sort of take the first part before. Uh, you know, I personally and luckily I come from a very broad minded family. So, you know, at home, I like I have an elder brother who's a lawyer. But I never faced any bias at home, you know, like my parents did not treat me any separately than they treated my brother. But there was one thing was clear that, you know, we will equip you till college and then it's your sort of, you know, responsibility after that. Right. And I think that's exactly why I wanted to change the dynamic, because I, when I stepped outside, I think nine out of 10 women face a biases at home. Um, secondly, um, in the ecosystem, too, yes, a lot of people, uh, you know, if you're a woman entrepreneur, there are misconceptions and things around the fact that, oh, yeah, you know, you must be doing this as a hobby or is this a side gig for you? You know, people think that, oh, you know, just because she's a woman, she's just, you know, doing it as a hobby. And that's wrong, right? Because there are some amazing women out there who are building such uh, amazing companies that are really solving real world problems. And um, I think another misconception that a lot of people have is that, you know, women don't know how to um, sort of, or they don't understand money, business and finance, right? Um, and this sort of comes from the fact that most financial decisions historically have been taken by men. Men are the ones who always control money. So they automatically sort of, you know, translate that bias and say, oh, if you're running, if you're a woman running a business, how would you know how to raise money, how to manage money, so on and so forth, right? So personally for me, I will be really honest. Um, if I have ever faced a bias, I've just spoken out against that. And that's worked for me because that's the kind of person I am. I will not like I will call out a spade for a spade. But uh, you're very right there. Most women will not talk about this, right, which is which was my motivation to do what I'm doing, because we are sort of a, a sounding board for so many other women, right, who might not be able to speak out or might not know how to sort of get rid of biases. Right. Another thing is that women don't talk about what they're building. Uh, unlike men who will talk about, you know, anything that they've done and make it a big deal, women don't talk about themselves enough, even though they've achieved quite a lot. So uh, we're trying to change that. And I think all of you here are a great example, because I think the generations to come, like the way that I look at it, an entrepreneur is genderless. It doesn't matter um, if I'm a man or a woman or a girl or a boy, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm solving the problem, I'm looking at the worldview and I have a solution, right? So why should gender have anything to do with it? Today, unfortunately, we have such few women in entrepreneurship and such few money going to women in entrepreneurship that I need to do something and create NQB to sort of, you know, level the playing field. But I honestly hope by the time, you know, y'all are, you all have grown up and, you know, you want to take those sort of career decisions, there are no gaps. Yeah, yeah, truly. So um, there are two questions that we've got. And one of them is, what is the most exciting women led startup that you have come across? Um, yeah, and what's the most innovative startup? Um, so to be honest, um, I don't have one answer to that because I think every startup is solving a very, very exciting problem in my mind, at least. And I speak to like 50 startups a week. So even remembering all of them and picking uh, one is going to be tough. But uh, there was definitely, uh, you know, one company um, that I, uh, you know, that was part of NQB that I think was doing something very, very impactful. Um, so the company was called Hello Plato, and
and uh, what they were doing was um, again us based company us founder but she had sort of built this bot you know like a bot which is like an automated uh, messaging tool which would use whatsapp to help teachers communicate with students and the use case was very interesting because look during the pandemic y'all your school went online right because you all have laptops you all have internet right but imagine the kids in rural areas or tier 3 cities they don't have access to all of this what about their education so but everyone today has like a feature like whatsapp right so this particular tool would help uh, teachers feed in their lesson plans or any learning material and um, you know a child could literally get on whatsapp and you know complete all the learning along with a lot of mcqs and stuff like that right and to me that was so innovative and revolutionary because um i think creating literacy and education and especially at that time when the world you know even when bigger schools were figuring out how to keep the continuum of education uh this founder thought about how to make sure that these kids don't miss out right so um i'm always a uh, very sort of biased to companies that create more impact um you know and of course commercialization uh you know is definitely there in so many angles um apart from that i think uh, there's one more company that uh, sort of um we have invested in um it's a company called um ready set jet it's actually a beauty tech company uh, again very interestingly very innovative products but um she's actually building out this entire platform in the metaverse right now uh where the idea is that again she wants to employ a lot of um, you know women and girls in slums so that they can sort of become sales agents of products but how do you give training to them right how do you scale up training but you can do that with the metaverse today so on and so forth right so uh you know i think uh, as i'm very privileged that i get to speak to so many entrepreneurs on a daily basis and yeah these were two that sort of stuck out for me that you're working with someone who is making huge impact and that too on a recently upcoming technology which is the metaverse mhm mm it is amazing and yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> it's, it's 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 very interesting and you know like every day uh you know like there's one company that we invested in um just recently um she has sort of built this health tech platform for women and girls to track pcos right i'm sure all of you know what pcos right it's a lifestyle disease and it's brilliant you know she's using tech to do that or so many solutions in the sustainability space right in the environmental space um so it's actually really really interesting um to see the kind of companies that women and men you know we also invest in companies led by men and when we invest in them we sort of bring in the diversity um so i think there's so much um, need for innovation out there and like i would like to coax each one of you that please consider becoming an entrepreneur and if there's an idea you're passionate about you please reach out to me and if you have a solution i'd love you know to have a chat with you and you know give you some feedback on that um re relating to that another person asked a question uh, mm -hmm. which is as you work closely with advisory consultancy and investors mm -hmm. what do you look at in an upcoming business or new startup idea to be convinced of its success to invest in it it's in the chat yeah a uh, very good question very very good question um lot of factors it's not only dependent on one thing see at an early stage um a lot of the investment decision depends on the founder and their you know her or his conviction right how much can you prove uh to someone else that you are capable and able to run a business how passionate you are and what's your execution skill see you and i can have the same idea you know but the difference is who executes it more efficiently and more effectively and quicker right so definitely we look for execution skill we also look for how scalable your idea is right so today scalability means if i'm like speaking to 10 of you can i also speak to 10 million of you 
right? Uh, because those are the those are the companies that we know if you infuse more money can grow big, right? And that's sort of the model of investing. So definitely, is your idea scalable? And generally, scalability is linked to technology, right? So how tech enabled um, or what technology are you using, so on and so forth, right? Um, then we also look at how unique your you know sort of uh, uh, solution is. What is the USP? of your particular company or your startup because how are you differentiating yourself right today there are so many companies so many startups out there so what are you doing that makes you different and stand out um and i think lastly of course uh, you know your people skill and your people ability right uh, cause an organization cannot grow without good talent and as a leader as an entrepreneur you need to be able to inspire people for the best talent or the best people to come and join your team right that's very very important um so yeah those are some of the things and um convince success like i said uh, you know startup investing or running startups is a very risky business because a lot mm-hmm. of things you know there are external and internal factors that can go wrong and there are like failure rates are much higher than success rates but at the same time it's all really exciting uh, right and um, you know just being part of this whole ecosystem makes you learn so much right maybe a bad investment will also teach you something more than what a good investment would have taught you right so but yeah those are kind of the things to keep in mind um your comment about a bad investment can also teach just as much as a good investment was yeah. extremely impactful that's that's true most people usually don't talk about it but um that's true something uh, it experience is an experience yeah i mean like think about it you know in your own sort of context maybe a sort of exam or a test that you did very badly taught you more than a test that went very well for you right, right. think about and it's all in the mindset oh, yeah 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 you you always learn much more and you know i kind of keep saying this right that see there's nothing called failure in life you know take that word out it's just a hiccup you know i mean in go wide it's it's okay it's a hiccup and everyone has them there's not one single person a human in my you know mind in this world who has got everything right in their life right there are there are hiccups there are setbacks all the time right it's it's your ability of navigating through them you know in a very positive and a very sort of forward looking outlook that's going to separate you right so you can have an attitude where you say oh my god why is this happening to me covid happened i can't do this blah 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 of course you know you can complain and cry as much as you want right but there are very few who say let's use this to our advantage or what is the flip side of this or it's okay you know i'll just try again so you know always go with the you know with that sort of attitude Wow, guys! I I think I've given you too much gyan now. I think you all are like, <laughs> really like this is this is this is too heavy for us. No, this is very interesting stuff. Seriously. Um. Anyways, um, it's uh, uh, um, it's almost time. I think yeah, you have another time commitment now. So, like on this note, we'd like to conclude this RJ one lecture. Um, a big thanks to you, Miss Diksha, for uh, your insights and taking the time out to speak to us. And we'd also like to thank everyone else who joined in on a Friday. and we hope to see all uh, you, you all soon so yeah bye everyone bye everyone thank you, thank you so much thank you thank you for attending no worries